We're going to have revival here in October. So, Teresa, if you would bring me that note, I see uh, we're going to put it on the bulletin board, but I see Dr. Stanley Moore and his wife Evelyn here this morning, and I just want to make mention of this uh, revival in October. Uh, it's going to be at the Church of God uh, here in uh, Elm City, North Carolina, uh, and uh, it will be October the 2nd, 5th, and 7th in 2016. On the 2nd, they have Tommy Wells. He'll be preaching there. He's from uh, one of the churches in Fayetteville. October the 5th, Dr. Rabbi John Atkins, a friend of mine that's been on Ask the Pastor with us, he'll be there. And then uh, on October the he's a, by the way, he's a Messianic Jew, uh, Dr. Ra Rabbi, uh, Dr. John Atkins. October the 7th, uh, the Reverend Henry Caldwell, Pastor of the First Church of God in Raleigh, North Carolina. And then there are going to be some women events. That will be posted out on our bulletin board so you can see it. Shiloh has a revival coming up in September. We'll be announcing that. And we have revival. This is in October, rather, October 16. And then we have one before that. But uh, we're here today to worship God. And I have a message that God laid on my heart. Who cares for your soul? If you would turn in your Bibles to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19. Who cares for your soul? Everywhere I go, I meet people who seem to be in a ditch, in a ditch of despair, people who are broken, people who feel like there's no hope. They have a case of the blues, and they feel like no one cares. I, I'm sure you've met people, many people that feel that way, and people that think that way, People who have reached the bottom, broken hearts, broken lives, broken dreams. If you're there today, then this message is for you. If you have come to the place that you feel like no one cares, I want you to listen to what the Lord would have you to hear today. See, the church exists for one reason and that one reason is to win souls to the Lord Jesus Christ. Of course, then we're supposed to disciple them. But the reason that Jesus came was to save souls. Look at Luke 19 and 10. He says, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. We were all born in sin, all conceived in iniquity. And we all need a Savior. And the reason you need a Savior, and I need a Savior, and the whole world needs a Savior, is because your soul is eternal. You're going to spend eternity somewhere. And because of that, your soul has infinite value. You are the crowning work of God's creation. And your soul is worth more than all of the treasures in this world combined. My subject this morning who cares for your soul? Let us pray. Father, once again, I pray that you will send conviction power into this place. Help us to understand, Father, the greatness of your love. Help us to understand the power of Calvary, the power of the blood, and, Lord, the length of eternity. Lord, let me preach the gospel with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. Thank you for saving the lost and equipping the saints to go out and do the work of ministry. Thank you, Father, for all of your blessings, for it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. Who cares for your soul? You've heard me say it many times, of all the Old Testament characters, David is my favorite. I love David because he is just like the rest of us. He had his ups and he had his downs, yet with all his problems, all of his successes, with all his failures, here's a man after God's own heart. We see him so close to God that he could write the 23rd Psalm and say, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And then in the 27th Psalm, we see him so close to God that he could write, The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? And then we see him in another place. He is so forgetful of God that he backslides and he falls into that terrible sin. We don't know David as David, God's champion. Most of us think of David as the adulterer. But God just puts it out there just like it is. He uses people in the Bible 
to show us just how we are. We were born and conceived in sin and iniquity, and we have all fallen into the trap of the devil, and we need a redeemer, and we need to be saved from sin. David had his ups, he had his downs, he had his mountaintops, and he had his moments of despair. Look at him in Psalms 142, verse 4. Here's where God spoke to my, to my spirit. David said, I looked on my right hand and beheld, and there was no man that would know me. All his friends are gone. Refuge had failed me. Where can I go? No man cared for my soul. Do you see that? No man cared for my soul. David had a case of the blues. But through it all, he learned to trust in God. Through it all, he learned to reach out to God and by faith to get a hold of God and to get a hold of eternal life. Through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. Through it all, I've learned to trust in God. Is that your testimony today? That I've had my ups, I've had my downs, I've had my woes, I've had my sorrows, I've had my joys, I've had my happy moments. But through it all, praise God. God has been with me. I've been through the fire. I've been through the flood. I've been through the waters. But none of it was able to stop me because the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. I gave my heart to Jesus. My name is in the Lamb's book of life. I'm on my way to heaven, and I'm singing as I go. I don't have a song of sob. I got a song of joy unspeakable that's full of glory. He put a new song in my heart. He reached down into the Mary clay, reached way down he had to reach way down for me. And then he lifted me up, set my feet on the solid rock to stay. Hallelujah. And I've been going and going and going and going and loving every moment of it. Oh, yeah, I have my moments of, of, of difficulty. I have my trials and my tests. But praise God, I know that God is in control of my life. And I know just like David know, knew, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Goodness and mercy, they're on my trail, and everywhere I go, they're hunting me down. That, is, that tr word trail is a hunting term, by the way, and it means that they're after me. If you give your heart to Jesus, you're going to have tough places, but guess what? That's going to be something on your trail, a hunting term, goodness and mercy, hunting you down, trying to overtake you. Amen. David. His life was a life that was lived, and we, re we remember his ups and his down. But through it all, he learned to trust in God. See, life can deal you some tough blows. It's like that old spiritual song, sometimes I'm up, sometimes I'm down. But praise the Lord, I'm heaven bound. See, life has some tough issues, and life can be crushing at times. But the real issue of of life is this is your name in the lamb's book of life are you heaven bound hallelujah are you going to go to heaven if you should breathe your last breath today where would you spend eternity see david got so discouraged that he said no one cares for my soul and there are people all around us who feel that way today people that feel nobody cares Nobody cares whether I live or whether I die. Oh, I don't see those people. Sure you do. They're in the rest homes. They're on the back streets of forgotten men. They're, they're in homes where no one visits, where their children and their family has forgotten them, and they feel like no one cares. Oh, it's real. It's out there. Nobody cares whether I live or whether I die. Nobody cares for me. Nobody cares. Maybe they feel just like David. Nobody cares for my soul. If you feel that way this morning, I want to show you from the Word of God how badly mistaken you are. First of all, God cares for your soul. Go back to the Garden of Eden and you'll see Adam and Eve as they fall into sin. God's perfect creation. Man without sin. They broke God's law, and when God's law is broken, his justice demands that punishment must follow. If you break the law in this land, I mean, we're a nation gone crazy. 
gone wild. People, you know, saying this life matters, that life matters. Let me tell you, God so loved the world that all lives matter. And if you break the laws in this land, we ought to have some people arrested and put in jail and then put in prison, incarcerated until they pay the price. We're gone crazy. Amen. We need to realize that our government was established on Judeo-Christian values. And the reason that you get incarcerated if you break the law is because if you break God's law, the law demands punishment. Man, if you get justice, you're doing good. But thank God, mercy comes from the Father. God loves you. God cares for your soul. Amen. And when God's law is broken, God must have punishment for that law the bible says the wages of sin is death death is eternal separation from god in a prison house call hell and then you'll be put into a lake of fire it's not for a day it's not for a week it's not for a month it's not for a year it's not for a hundred years or millennials it is for eternity for eternity you will be separated from God because of sin. So God, he looks down on fallen man. He saw them on their way to hell. But in turn, eternity past, God already had a plan for redemption. God knew that man would fall into sin. God knew that Christ would have to come to this earth as a redeemer. God cares for your soul. Look, look at Ephesians 1 and 3 where Paul penned these words. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Verse 4 says, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. And look at verse 5 having predestinated unto us the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. God cares for your soul. The apostle Paul said he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blemish before him in love. He foreordained that we should become sons of God through Jesus Christ. That doesn't mean that he predestined who would be saved and who would be lost. It means that God knew that man would fall into sin and he predestined the plan of redemption. And God has not predestined some to die and go to hell and some to die and go to heaven. No, God had a plan knowing that man would fall into sin to redeem man. So who cares for your soul? God cares for your soul. You and I, we were in the mind of God before the creation was ever established. Before the foundation of the world, we were in the mind of God. God is the I am. He's the I am. He's not locked in time like we are. We have a space of a a few years to get our hearts right with God once we come to the knowledge of sin. And it's in those years that we determine where we will spend eternity. The apostle Peter said also it was before the foundation of the world. Look at 1 Peter 1.18. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation, received by the tradition of men from your fathers. But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained, this plan was foreordained, before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. He's a very personal God, and it was all done for you and for me. Verse 21, who by himself, do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. See, you're the crowning work of God's creation. And because of that, your soul has eternal value. God cares for your soul. There are no surprises with God. 
God knew that when we were born, that you and I would commit sin. We were conceived in sin and iniquity. Amen. He knew that we would need a redeemer. He knew that we would need a savior. Redemption was no afterthought with God. We got some agnostics and atheists with a little atheists with a little pea brain trying to figure out the creator. We've got some intellectuals, and they think they're so smart, but the Bible says the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. I want, if you're looking by live stream today, I want you to know there's a God in heaven, there's a Savior called Jesus, there's the Holy Ghost, there's a church, and all of these people care for your soul. God loves you. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says that Jesus is the Lamb of God that was slain from the foundation of the world. See, I, I, I just noticed one of my friends, he, he, he put his little baby boy out there on uh, Facebook, and he's so thrilled that he has a child, and he's so carried away with that little baby. See, <laughs> we all want children. It's just natural that we want children. Well, God wanted children. Just like that, God wants children. Sometimes our children, they break our heart through disobedience. But we still love them. We still want them. We still care for them. See, it broke God's heart when man fell into sin. But God says, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. And I care for your soul. Amen. And the Bible says, and we all quote it so quickly, look at John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. How much does God love you? The Bible says he spared not his own Son but delivered him up for us all. God gave his Son and the blood of his son to save you and me. We have corruptible blood, but we weren't redeemed with corruptible blood. We were redeemed with the blood of God. It was holy blood. It was God's blood. And there's power in the blood. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that washes white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing, 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 praise God. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. God cares for your soul. Look to Calvary if you don't believe it. God said, I spared not my own son in order to save you. God cares for your soul. I remember one of my buddies that was killed in Vietnam and the Marine Corps sent me as an honor guard to escort his remains home. And before I got there, the War Department, they sent his parents a telegram saying, we regret to inform you that your son has been killed in action. It broke his parents' heart. I will never forget looking at my buddy lying there in those dress blues in that casket. His daddy, a World War II veteran, and how he looks at his son. I mean, a man that had seen death on the battlefield. He looks at his son and puts his arms around him and picks him up, weeping tears, bitter tears. They didn't see their son die there. His mother wept. His brothers wept. The family wept. They didn't see it when it happened. He was in an open rice paddy. He was a point man going across the field, and there were machine guns on both sides, and one of those bullets hit him in the chest. He didn't see the bullet coming, and they didn't see him when that bullet hit him and cut him down. They didn't see the blood streaming from his body. They didn't hear the agonizing cry. They only knew one thing. Their son was dead. But how different it is with God. He saw it all. He saw his son die on that cross. He saw the wounds. He saw the blood as it oozed out of his body. He heard the agonizing cry as Jesus cried from the cross, My God, my God, 
Why has thou forsaken me? The Bible says it pleased the Father to bruise him. It wasn't what those Roman soldiers did. God the Father took and put sin of the whole world. He thrust it upon the sacrificial lamb. It pleased the Father to bruise him. He saw it all, yet he cried that he loves you and me. See, the heavenly Father, it broke his heart. But all through it, he was saying to us, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I hope if people never remember a lot about what I preach, I hope they remember this. God loves you. God loves suffering humanity. God said, I love you so much, and I care for your soul so much. Look what I have given. I have given my greatest treasure. I have given my son to save you and to keep you out of hell. Don't ever say nobody cares for my soul. God cares. But not only does God care, secondly, Christ cares for your soul. He had the highest place in heaven. Yet he condescended to come to earth's manger. The Holy Ghost overshadowed a virgin named Mary, and she conceived, and our Savior, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was born. The Son of God became the Son of Man, so that you and I, who are sons of men, could become sons of God. Look at what John said in John 1, 14. He said, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and of truth. I want you to let the full impact of that verse break upon your heart that Jesus Christ came to this earth. Very God became perfect man. No ordinary man could say, I am the light of the world. No ordinary man could say, I and the Father are one. No ordinary man could say, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He was no ordinary man. He was very God and perfect man. What is the gospel? It is he who was manifest in the flesh, who was crucified, who died for our sins, who rose again, who is exalted to the right hand of God to be our Savior, King of kings and Lord of lords. He was no ordinary man. He was the God-man, 100% God, 100% man. The Bible says, greater the mistress of godliness. He was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up, unto glory. Go on and praise him because you have a great high priest that's seated at the right hand of his majesty on high and God has given him a name above every name because Jesus Christ humbled himself, became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, God cares for your soul. Jesus Christ cares for your soul. Thank God that our preaching is not in vain. Amen. If Jesus, the Son of God, and the Son of Man, who is the mistress of godliness, it is him who we proclaim to suffering humanity. Thank God that you and I, we do not have to die and go to hell. The preaching of the cross is the power of God under salvation to everyone that believeth. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and if the Holy Ghost is speaking to you, you don't have to die and go to hell if you've never been regenerated by the blood. God brought you here. God has you watching this by live stream. God wants to save your soul. Jesus wants to save your soul. Jesus Christ cares for your soul. But not only does God care for your soul, not only does Jesus care for your soul, but thirdly, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, he cares for your soul. Well, who is the Holy Spirit, Pastor? Well, he's a person. He's the third part of the Godhead. He's not an it. He's not a thing that you receive. He is God. He is a person. He has feelings. He can be grieved. You can send him away. Amen. Or you can receive as he deals with your heart. We know that once we're saved that the Spirit himself, the Holy Spirit, bears witness with our hearts that we are the sons of God, which were born not of the will of the flesh nor the will of man. 
but the will of God. It's God's will that all be saved. God loves us. Hallelujah. What a loving God. See, the Holy Spirit, he's a person, and he cares for your soul. He's co-equal with God the Father and God the Son. And just before Jesus returned to heaven, he said, I'm going to send the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, another comforter to take my place on earth. And he said the first thing that he's going to do when he comes, he is going to convict men of their sin, of the righteousness that they can have, and of the judgment of God to come. The Bible says it is appointed unto man, but once to die, and after that, the judgment. Oh, I'll just live my life any way I want to. It doesn't affect anyone but me. It does affect others. It affects your family. It affects the little children. It affects all types of people and generation. But guess what? You're going to spend eternity somewhere, and God cares for your soul. The Holy Ghost, that's what he does. He's the spirit of truth. And he comes to us, and he says, you're not right with God. Oh, well, I'm all right. I'm all right. I do this and I do that, and I'm a good person. And, and the Holy Ghost comes and says, no, you're not right with God. You've been in and out of the church many times, but you've never been born again. You've never been regenerated by the blood. You've never had your sins flushed out by the blood of Jesus Christ. You've never really humbled yourself and invited him into your heart and made him Lord of all. See, the Holy Ghost, he comes to let us know you are not right with God. And, and even the saint, when they sin, the Holy Ghost, he will come and he will convict you and he'll let you know that's not right. Make it right with that person. Oh, God, there's a sermon there. Make it right with God. Go to that person. Make some restitution. Tell them, I was wrong. I did you wrong. Sometimes you just need to leave your, your offering at the altar and go make things right with somebody else and then come back. But don't, don't when it comes to dealing with your soul, say, God, I need to get this thing fixed right now. And then go and get your heart right fixed with others. See, the Holy Ghost, he comes and he says, you've sinned. And someday you must face the judgment of God. Someday you're going to have to give an account for the deeds that you have done in your flesh. And after having pointed out our sin, he points us to Calvary. He points us to Jesus, to the only one who can save us. And the Holy Ghost says, you need a Savior. The Holy Ghost, he cares for your soul. He says, turn from your sin and put your faith in Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Amen. See, the mission of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, is not to speak of himself. Jesus said, when he's come, he won't talk of himself. He'll talk about me. He'll talk about the price that I paid for your redemption. He'll talk about my love. He'll talk about my goodness. He'll talk about my miracle working power. He'll talk about Jesus that was born of the virgin. Jesus Christ, the miracle worker. Jesus Christ crucified on the cross. Jesus Christ, the exalted Savior. Jesus Christ, the ascended Lord. Jesus Christ, the soon coming King. He does this because the Holy Ghost cares for your soul and God wants you to be saved from your sin. Amen. See, the entire Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, they all care for your soul. The Bible says God is not willing that any should perish, but all should come to redemption. In that scripture I read earlier, there are people that teach, oh, you know, he predestined who would go to heaven and who would go to hell. I've been preaching long enough right now that you ought to know I put so, so many scriptures out there that God... The Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Ghost cares for your soul. He's not willing that any should perish. What he predestined was the fact that all of us would be born, uh, that he predestined the plan of salvation. He knew Adam and Eve, given a free will, would fall into sin. He knew that we would get, fall into sin because we receive the, the nature of Adam. The first man, Adam, he sinned, and death reigned upon all men. The last Adam, Jesus Christ, he came to this world, paid redemption's price, and now he says, I'll free you from sin, from the weight of sin. I'll sanctify you wholly through my blood. I'll sanctify you and wash you in my word. I'll sanctify you with the Holy Ghost, and I'll give you power to live a Christian life. You say, well, I could never live it. 
Well, you can't live it, but the God that comes to live inside of you, he can live it. He's holy without spot, blemish, or wrinkle. And if you fall, guess what? You have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, a family lawyer. And he says, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let me tell you, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost cares for your soul. Fourthly, the church cares for your soul. A church is not just a mass of bricks and stones and mortar. The church is made up of people, people who care for your soul. The church is made up of people, people who were sinners, but now they've been redeemed by the blood, hallelujah, and they've been washed in the blood, and now they're free from sin, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Being made free from sin, we become servants of God. We have our fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage, amen, having been made free from sin. He doesn't just forgive us and leave us in that sinful state. Oh, no. He flushes all the filth out. Hallelujah. He washes us in the blood of Jesus Christ, God's only begotten Son. And that blood has so much power in it. Hallelujah. That when, when you one drop of blood bought me a million years. The songwriter said a soul was born. Each time he shed a tear, he loosed the chains. Oh, my God. That fettered you and me. He bought my soul, glory, through death at Calvary. Every chain, every shackle, every habit, everything the devil had ever tried to do to my life in one instant. The blood of Jesus Christ freed me. If that's your testimony, let's stand and give Jesus Christ a standing ovation. Let's praise him today. Let's thank him today. You are not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold but with the precious blood of Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Look at the testimony in here. Look at the people, devil, that have been redeemed by the blood. Look at the people that have a testimony. Glory to God. Look at the millions that have come through Calvary's flow. Hallelujah. Thank God for the blood. Amen. The church is made up of people. Who care for your soul? Look at Luke 10, 19 again. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. And that's the mission of the church. The church cares for your soul. Our business is not just to build buildings. Well, why do we build them? Why do we have them, Pastor? Why do we have various organizations in the church? Why do we give our tithes and why do we give offerings? We do it all because the church cares for your soul and the church wants to see people get saved. We are a loving, growing church bringing hurting families to a healing Jesus. Put that mission statement up there, Brother David. Westmoreland is a loving, growing church bringing hurting families to a healing Jesus. We all need a Savior. We all need a healer. We all needed a blood transfusion. Thank God for the blood. We've been redeemed and we've been transformed by the power of the blood. Hallelujah. Our business is to save souls. The mission of the church is to get people saved and to disciple them so they can make heaven their eternal home, so they can be equipped and empowered to go out and to tell the story. The Great Commission, we, we spoke about it on Wednesday night. Uh, Pastor Rick is going to be preaching this Wednesday night on the supernatural power of God. But I, my assignment last week was the DNA of evangelism. And I showed from the scriptures that in Matthew chapter 28, 
Jesus gave the Great Commission. In Mark chapter 16, Jesus gave the Great Commission. In Luke chapter 24, Jesus gave the Great Commission. In John chapter 20, Jesus gave the Great Commission. And in Acts 1 and 8, Jesus gave the Great Commission. He gave the Great Commission five different times in the Scriptures, but he, Jesus said, I'm going to send the Holy Ghost, the great enabler. He's going to give you power to witness. You don't go alone. You go in the power and the authority of the name of Jesus. You go with the Spirit of God upon you. Hallelujah. Because God says the anointing destroys the yoke. The devil has some of you bound in chains and shackles. But let me tell you something. The anointing of God destroys the yoke. And breaks every chain, every chain, break every chain. Praise God, break every chain, Lord. Glory to God. The church exists to get people saved. You're going to live forever. The only question is where. And the church is made up of people who love you, who care for your soul. If I didn't care about souls... I would question my own spirituality and my own relationship with God. If I didn't care about souls, I'd just say, let's eat, drink, be merry. Tomorrow we're going to die. What's the use? Why do I preach this gospel? I do it because I care about souls. I'll never forget what Jesus did for me. And what he's done for one, he'll do for another. I, I, I can't. I'm a debtor. I owe a debt I cannot pay. He paid it all, but he called me and he called you to carry the gospel to the world around us. Hallelujah. I preach because I care about souls. Your soul has eternal value. If you lose your soul, it is an irreplaceable loss. You cannot replace your soul. It's one of a kind. If you lose your soul, it's an irreversible loss. You cannot reverse it. Once you die, that's it. There's no purgatory. There's no second chance. Today is the day of salvation. And if you're not saved and if you're not living right, let me throw that in there, praise God. Get to the altar and get it right. Just a little talk with Jesus and make it all right. And make it all right and make it all right. We all fail, but praise God. God said his anger endured but a moment. His favor is for a lifetime. You might be in a season of weeping, but weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Maybe you just have that case of the blues, but let me tell you, somebody cares for your soul, and all you got to do is get connected with God, and you're on your way to victory. Go on and praise him. Hasn't he done some great things in your life? <laughs> Hallelujah. You know that your soul is the most valuable possession you have. It's eternal. You're going to live forever. Where will you spend eternity? Will it be in the splendors of heaven or will it be in the horrors of hell? See, your soul has value. Put, put Mark uh, 836 up there. Jesus said, for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. The next verse says, what will a man give in exchange for his soul? What is it that you love more and you want more in this life than you want eternal life with God in eternity? That is the thing that you treasure. If you treasure your soul, you will come to the altar and give your heart to Jesus. What shall a man give in exchange for a soul? See, there's no reason, there's no excuse that anybody has for not giving their heart to Christ. Christ died for you. The Holy Spirit is drawing you. The Bible is speaking to you. We're praying for you. This church has already prayed before you get, got here. And this preacher is pleading for you to come to Jesus. If you lose your soul, it will be an inexcusable loss. Why? Because no one doesn't have to die and go to hell. God cares for your soul. Jesus Christ cares for your soul. The Holy Spirit cares for your soul. The church cares for your soul. And right now, there's a battle that's going on. It's a battle for your soul. 
Satan has always wanted to ascend above God. He can't do that. So he goes after the souls of men. He can't hurt God. So what he does, he tries to hurt people that are created in God's own image. And God loves you. See, there's a constant battle that's going on for souls. And when you come to church, you need to realize that. That's why people's minds drift off when the word of God is being preached. That's why babies cry. That's why people pass notes. That's why people text. That's why people pass notes and watch video games while they're sitting in church. You think I don't see it? I see it, and God sees it. That's why people walk out of church during the altar service. There's a battle going on for your soul. That's why people have a negative attitude. There's a battle, a real battle going on for your soul. But see, God brought you here today and those watching by live stream, and there's no excuse for you to leave without being saved. Don't ever say no one cares for my soul. God cares for your soul. Jesus cares. The Holy Spirit cares. The church cares. This preacher cares. But here's the real issue. Do you care? about your own soul. Do you care? That's the real issue that every person on this planet must face. Is it well with your soul? Are you prepared? Are you ready to meet God? I want every head bowed and every eye closed. Please don't get up and walk around. No one walking around. No one getting up except for the musicians to come. I want you to search your own heart today, and I want you to ask yourself, am I prepared to meet God? Is it well with my soul? Do you care about your soul? Are you prepared to meet God? It's appointed unto man that wants to die, and after that, the judgment. I'll never forget the poem that I was taught as a small lad, probably before I got in high school even. It's a poem by a man named Alan Seeger. And the poem said, I have a rendezvous with death at some disputed barricade when spring comes back with rustling shade and apple blossoms fill the air. I have a rendezvous with death when spring brings back blue days and fair. And he ends that poem by saying, And I, to my pledge word, am true. I shall not fail that rendezvous. He died on the battlefield in World War I. Every person has a rendezvous with death just like Alan Seeger has. If you're not right with God, I want you to get up from where you are and I want you to make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today. The Spirit is calling, the bride is calling, the Bible says whosoever will, let him come, take of the water of life freely. Jesus said, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. He said, for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world? It's not even possible to gain the whole world. But if you could gain it, if you had all the treasures of this world, what good would it be if you lost your soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? To the
you know Jesus today. You're watching by live stream. I want to ask you, do you know Jesus as your Savior? The Bible says if you believe in your heart that Jesus died on the cross as a substitute for your sin, that he was buried, that he rose again the third day, you will ask him into your heart with the heart man believes unto righteousness with the mouth confession is made unto salvation the Holy Spirit is calling with arms wide open he'll pardon you no matter how much you fail it's no secret what God can do Father, today we plead the blood. If you don't know Jesus, you can pray this simple prayer. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me in the blood. I confess my sins. I confess I have failed. I ask you to come in my heart. I believe you paid the price for my soul. Come into my heart and save me, Lord. I thank you. And my sins are forgiven. I thank you that I'm saved. Receive him in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You got saved, send us a note. Got that on live stream. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my troubles at last I cross, Lord, I will ever be, I will praise you, ever, ever be, be true. true, the shame and reproach, the shame and reproach, then he'll call me someday. Yeah. 